continuing on the subject of the virtue of kavana, the kavana here being the desire to be attached to God, to cleave to God, and that this kavana is the neshama of the mitzvah that gives the mitzvah life and makes it rise like the wings of a bird that help it rise upwards. So the Rebbe talks about two kinds of, of neshama, two kinds of kavana. One is the love and fear that is born out of intelligence, which rises to the world of Bria. And the other is the love and fear that comes from the innate, instinctive love that every Jew has. And this raises the neshama, its neshama, to the world of Yitzhidim. The mitzvahs that they do go even higher to the divine presence in the world of Bria or the divine presence in the world of Yitzhidim. So much for the worlds of Ibibri and Yitzira. What about the world of Atsilos? So the Rebbe says in the Tanya for 9th of Nisan, on page 104, after the colon, <clears throat> And the world of Atsilos, It is higher, far above the comprehension and the understanding of human intelligence of created intelligence. Because the wisdom, the bina and the das, chachma bina and das, of the Ebishter, of God himself, are completely and totally united there in the world of, Yitz, of Atzilus, with the world of, of Atzilus. The yichud atzum v'nifla, with a wondrous oneness, the yeser says the yeser is, with a much greater strength, infinitely more than it is in the world of Bria. So in the world of Bria, there is comprehension there for the created intelligence. But in the world of Atsilus, no created intelligence can comprehend the godliness that is there, because it is God's wisdom itself. Whereas in the world of Bria, there, there can be comprehension for the created intelligence. Kisham, because there in the world of Bria, Yordu lahoye bebechinas tzimtzum, there the, intel- God, the divine intelligence illuminates with restriction, with restraint, with a tzimtzum. Kedei sheyuch lusich limnivroyim lekabel mehem chabad, so that the intelligence of the created being should be able to receive the the Chachma bin and Das of God, Leidas Hashem to be able to know God, Ulahoven Ulahasig, and to comprehend and grasp Eza Hasoga Bain Sai Baruchu, at least some degree of understanding and, and grasp of of godliness. Kifi Kayachsiklim Hanavrayim according to the capacity of the created intelligences Shaheim Balig Vulvitahlis which are all of them finite and limited, <clears throat> they have an ability to understand some aspect of God without being overwhelmed. Shalei is batlu b'metziyusam, so that they, they do not cease to exist. V'lei yihiyu b'gede nevrayim klal, and they'll no longer be in the condition of a created being. Rak yachzeru l'mekeidam v'sharsham, rather they would return if they were overwhelmed by God's presence, they would return to their source and to their root, shahu b'chinas alikus mamish, which is godliness itself, and they would stop being created beings. And that's why the intelligence, God's intelligence, that is revealed in the world of Bria, is restricted with a symptom so that it not overwhelm the existence of the created beings. Hine tzimtzum he sibas ha'odo shemeire sham chabat shalein sev baruchu l'nisham eselu ve'elam habriya. It is this tzimtzum then that makes it possible for this divine light, the chabad of God Himself, the chokhmah bina das of God, to be able to illuminate the nishames of the world of bria. Mashein came ba'atzilus. Whereas in the world of Atzilus, there God's intelligence is revealed without a tzimtzum, without as great a tzimtzum, 
the F shall is Sichlim Nivrayim Lekabu Mehem. It is impossible for the created intelligence to receive any intelligence from those levels of Chabad. And that's why no created thought can comprehend godliness on that level at all. This is why. That Atzilus is the place, the permanent place of great tzaddikim. Not ordinary tzaddikim, but, but the exceptional tzaddikim. The kind of tzaddikim whose service of God, who serve God on a level much, much higher, even than the love and fear that are born out of intelligence and knowledge of God's greatness. We said before that the person who has a comprehension in godliness and this comprehension creates for him and gives birth to a love and fear of God with which he serves God, that love and fear raise the neshama like wings. They carry the neshama to the world of Bria. But to the world of Atsilus, even this intelligent love and fear would not be sufficient. Because just as the world of Atsilus itself is much, much higher than that which can be comprehended by the intelligence of a created being. Therefore, the intelligence of the created being that produces love and fear of God can't bring the neshama to the level of Atsilus. So, the, so, so that would not be sufficient. What then would bring a neshama to the level of Atsilus? It would be only those tzaddikim whose service of God is much higher than intelligence. Their service, their Aveda, was on the level of the Merkava, of the chariot for godliness, of the to be completely transparent, completely bottled, and to be completely absorbed into godliness and not have any existence of their own at all. They and all that is theirs. In other words, not only the nishama, not only the kavana, but also the body and also the, the, their physical existence. Al yidei ki mitzvahs through their performance of teira mitzvahs. Al derech sha'amru. For example, as we say about the avis, about the patriarchs, that hein hein hamerkava, that they were the chariots of God. And that is because all their life, constantly, this was the level of Aveda, the level of service that they had. It far transcended the, the rational motivation of even the highest Nishama. Rather, they served God through total transparency of self. They were a Merkava constantly, all the time, in, uh, in their life. But any neshama who is limited and therefore is incapable, is too small to be able to to rise to this level of aveda. To be able to be completely absorbed and lost in godliness in his aveda with a permanence, it happens only at times, at intervals. And why does it happen then? Because it is an auspicious time. Because from above, he is given this kind of assistance because this is a time when it is made easier. As for example, during the Shemona Esri, which is basically a a, a, a reaching to the level of Atsilus and particularly in the bowing in the Shemona Esri because every bowing is basically on the level of Bittu of the world of Atsilus as he says in, in the Piyat Chaim on, uh, on Kabbalah Shabbos 
because the bowing is an expression of this bitl, of this total submerging of self in God's light, to become as nothing before him, Azai Gamkain Ikek Then since this bitl comes to him only at times and only on occasion, therefore his place, his permanent place for his Nishama is in the world of Briya. Since his permanent condition is not one of Bittl, not one of Atsilus, therefore his permanent place is also not in the world of Atsilus, but rather in the world of Briya. And just as at times he does rise to the level of the Bittl of Atsilus, the Ace Zotzin, there are times, auspicious times, Taula Nishmose La Atsilus, where his Nishama does rise to the world of Atsilus, the Bechinas Mayim Nukim Kiedu Aliyedechem. So there are occasions in which the Nishama will be elevated to the world of Atsilus, just as in his Aveda, there are times and there are moments when he rises in his Bittal and experiences the Bittal that is equivalent of the world of Atsilus. In the Hayyem Yayim for today, the ninth of Nisan, the Rebbe writes that Jewish wealth is not houses and gold. The everlasting, true Jewish wealth is in being a Jew who keeps Teir and Mitzvahs and bringing into the world children and grandchildren who in turn also keep Teir and Mitzvahs. In the last two days, maybe the last three days, where on the seventh of Nisan the Rebbe spoke about the name of the family. The Alter Rebbe called himself Baruchovich. The Middle Rebbe called himself Shneyuri. Tzemach Tzedek called himself Shneyerson. And on the eighth of Nisan, the Rebbe speaks about the purpose of every neshama. That every neshama has its particular kind of service. And now on the ninth of Nisan, he talks about the true everlasting Jewish wealth is bringing children into the world who will keep Taita and Mitzvahs. All of this seems to be a, a build-up and a, a lead-in to, to the eleventh of Nisan, to the, to the Rebbe's Olgesundsein's birthday.